Uh, reducing pollution. Uh, when you look at the restoration section of the barometer, uh, again, uh, we've achieved 64% of the restoration and protection goals. Uh, this is a, there's quite a number of different factors that are taken into that consideration. One, reducing pollution, which I'm going to spend most of my time talking about, restoring habitats, uh, managing fisheries, protecting watersheds, and fostering stewardship. Uh, I think it's interesting when Rich talked, he talked about that we're about 45% of our way related to uh, uh, meeting some of our water quality goals, and we're 64% of our way towards some of the restoration pieces. And uh, I think it's just important to remember uh, that most of the science suggests that there's a certain lag time, and the exact extent of that lag time, you know, we're still trying to figure out. Um, related to reducing pollution, uh, it's a pretty uh, obvious picture right here of the places where we've been most successful have been related to wastewater treatment plants. Uh, despite the progress that we've made there, we still think there's some great opportunity uh, to continue to upgrade a lot of those facilities. Uh, and I know that there are plans to upgrade most of the major uh, facilities, uh, certainly in Maryland and Virginia. Um, we, uh, and when you look at this, um, despite the great job we've done with wind sources, I think we all recognize the great challenge that we have in front of us right now is how we're going to make greater progress related to non wind source. Uh, we need to do a better job related to air. We certainly need to do a better job related to agriculture that puts food on our table. And as you can see, things are going in the wrong direction uh, in the watershed related to impacts from urban development. Bay watershed is a beautiful place to live. More people want to live here. These impacts continue to increase. Uh, despite the fact uh, that we're not where we want to be related to restoration, uh, I would be remiss if I just didn't point out and just have to bear with me. Uh, there's a lot of partners in the Bay watershed. There's a lot of important work that's being done, and I just want to take just a couple of minutes to highlight a couple of things from each of the partners. Uh, in Pennsylvania, they've done an incredible job uh, since 2002 in restoring forest and buffers. Uh, they've established over 3,800 miles since that time. Uh, they're doing some great work in promoting methane digesters uh, to help us address the excess manure uh, that we have in the Pennsylvania part of the watershed and at the same time producing electricity. Uh, Virginia has done a great job on the land conservation issue. If you recall, when Governor Kane came in, they made a commitment uh, to uh, preserve over 400,000 acres in Virginia. Uh, they met that goal. That included establishing two, days, two new state parks, uh, six new state parks, uh, and uh, Governor McDonald uh, has extended that commitment to an additional 400,000 acres uh, over the next four years. Uh, in West Virginia, they've launched an outreach program through their website to help keep all the residents in the state uh, abreast of all the great work that they're doing. They've initiated a pilot program uh, for accelerating the implementation of agriculture best management practices in their eastern panhandle. And so far, over 80 farmers uh, have signed up uh, with that program. In the District of Columbia, uh, where stormwater, I think, is obviously the major problem, uh, we have a new stormwater fee program. Uh, there's a fee on bags to reduce trash, uh, which seems to be working very well, and that's a major problem uh, in places like the Anacostia watershed. Uh, they also have their Green Roofs initiative. Uh, they've installed uh, Green Roofs on 15 properties, uh, and the district is second in the nation uh, on Green Roof coverage. Uh, the Chesapeake Bay Commission in uh, Pennsylvania uh, have led an initiative on uh, biofuels, and I know that Matt Long is here today from the Commission. Uh, they've done a great job of trying to advance this new energy source, and at the same time, trying to figure out how to reduce nutrient input to the bed at the same time. Uh, there's uh, no free lunch with any new energy source, and uh, so this has been a great challenge. Uh, the Commission, certainly under the leadership of Ann Swanson, have done a great job uh, in working on the Carter Cummings legislation, which we think can bring some uh, critical money for the stormwater problem, particularly in places like the district. Uh, New York continues to make significant progress in implementing nutrient reduction projects such as wetlands restoration,
stream fencing, forest and buffers, uh, per, and precision feeding of livestock. Uh, in the Delaware, uh, they focus some of their efforts in restoring shad uh, in the Natticook River. Uh, last year, they stocked over 700,000 larvae. Uh, and it's interesting to see that the, uh, about 25% of the shad that are now returning to the Natticook are from uh, uh, these stocking efforts. Uh, I think that sometimes uh, it's easy for a lot of us to forget that we do have the headwater states, and I just think it's important to point out that the folks in Delaware and New York and West Virginia are, are making significant contributions. Uh, lastly, uh, in Maryland, our, under Governor O'Malley's leadership, uh, we've increased our available funding through our 2010 Chesapeake and Coastal Trust Fund. Uh, we've accelerated the implementation of some of our Act BMPs with a particular focus on cover crops. I think most of you are familiar that cover crops are one of the most cost-effective approach, approaches to reducing nutrient inputs in the bay. Um, we've signed into a law uh, things to reduce stormwater impacts, to require phosphorus-free detergents, and to reduce our air impacts through the Healthy Air, air Act. Um, and maybe uh, uh, an, an opportunity for you all to go on our website, the governor's website, uh, one of the main things that Governor O'Malley has been pushing is greater accountability uh, related to the efforts that we're doing uh, on the Bay. We have a base that website. Once a month, I have the pleasure of uh, going and meeting directly with the governor to talk about our progress as Bill Dennison uh, is smiling about that. It's a very interesting exercise when you have the executive of state uh, making you accountable on a monthly basis. Uh, I think despite all that litany of things I just went through, uh, I think we all recognize, uh, as Jeff said earlier, there's a tremendous uh, amount of uh, work that still needs to be done. Um, I'm an optimist. I've been working for the Department of Natural Resources for 25 years, so that probably makes me an optimist just by uh, continuing to work on this for so long. Uh, but I think there's a lot of reasons for us to be hopeful. Um, I think that one of the uh, Carter Cummings legislation that I talked about earlier that uh, brings some hope for potentially some great funding opportunities for stormwater. Uh, uh, I haven't talked much about the two-year milestones, but all the jurisdictions have agreed to these two-year milestones. I think it, it makes it so we have to keep our nose to the grindstone on a daily basis. Uh, we have the whole TNDL the watershed implementation uh, exercise that we're involved in now. Uh, we have President Obama's executive order uh, which really brings uh, together uh, all the federal agencies uh, in, in, in being a leader uh, in efforts to restore the Bay. Uh, one of the examples of that is the Department of Agriculture uh, has their new Farms and Forests for the 21st Century Initiative, uh, and the Department of Agriculture has also been investing in innovation through their conservation and innovation grants. Uh, so there's a lot of work going on out there, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. Uh, it's not just the responsibility of the government, it's the responsibility of everybody who lives uh, in this watershed. Uh, one of the other items that's included in this section uh, is this issue of providing a meaningful Bay experience uh, to all our students in the watershed. I'm a proud father of, of, um, of three uh, children. Uh, and I think that they're going to be the future stewards of this bay. And I think that we need to continue. I think we're at 80% on that uh, right now. But we need to continue to make that investment. Uh, it's, it's an investment in our future. And uh, I continue to be optimistic about our uh, opportunities to restore the bay. Um, I think this gives you a snapshot of where we are today. And I would just remind you to continue to look at the trends over time because they're really, really critical to see how they're doing. And 